Hey guys, Victor here with All Time Greats RC, hoping that you and yours are doing well. As for me, I'm excited. I was able to get a haircut finally. Uh, and I've been noticing in my eBay store, I have been selling cards like crazy. My eBay store is practically empty with the amount of cards that have left my store in the last few weeks. This, this surge in the hobby, it's unbelievable what's happening. I've been noticing a bunch of new YouTube channels centering around the topic of investing. YouTube is eating it up too, recommending those types of videos to us. And one area of concern that I have with it is in the area of credibility. I've been, I've been paying very close attention to, to some of them and, and, and it's one of them things, well, I used to collect back in, in 1994 and I quit the hobby for 20 years and I've gotten back into it in the last couple of years. And, and so, so now you're going to teach us how to invest. I just find that a little awkward in my opinion. And when I listen to, um, what's being said, some of it, uh, really concerns me. Some of it does not sound like really good advice. And so that, that has that caught my attention here lately and something that is an area of concern. I don't know if you guys have noticed it or maybe it's just me, uh, but, but that's, that's just my take on it. As a new YouTuber myself, I'm seeking out the advice of uh, Sean Cannell or um, Nick Nimmin or Roberto Blake. These guys are the heavyweights of YouTube how-to. And a lot of it they teach is, you know, you're either going to entertain or you're going to teach. So I get, you know, the concept that uh, YouTube is, has, is a platform for us to teach to a certain extent. Uh, but they also teach that we got to have credibility in, and behind what we're teaching. So with that, that's how come I'm, I'm, I'm very cautious of what I'm sharing, of what I'm saying, and... Um, uh, cred credibility is, is just is huge. I haven't purchased a whole lot lately because the PSA submissions have been coming through like crazy. I've had actually one SGC sub and one and a couple of PSA submissions that have come in in the last week, week and a half. So that's it's taking a lot of my um, funds that I would typically have for eBay. But that's okay. That's uh. That, that's great too, right? Well, today I want to share with you my very first SGC submission. And I want to share with you, I'm going to show you the, the entire submission at first, but then I want to show you some comparisons that I have observed between PSA and SGC. Let me get this ugly mug out. I, man, I really needed a shave today. So let me turn this camera around and let's look at some cards. Okay guys, so my decision to send to SGC was strictly experimental. Uh, I noticed the trend in the, in the hobby, I noticed the trend in the, in, on YouTube, and Mike O's submission group at the time decided to offer SG services. So I went to my submission box and chose some random cards to send in. Now I'm typically a, a set registry guy, so I was looking through my box just looking for cards that I typically would not have inside of a set registry. And like I says, it was just experimental uh, only. I wanted to look at, see, see what all the hype was about. Um, and I wanted to check out these uh, new slabs. They, uh, I, I like them overall. I think they're great. And starting us off is the 2018 Tops Living Babe Ruth in a 10. and I ended up getting two of those graded. The submission is 12 cards total. Nolan Ryan out of the 2018 Tops Living Set in a 10. And here's the second one. Next up is the Cal Ripken Jr. out of the Tops Living Set in a 10. And there's also a second one of that. These are going to be more than likely um, in my eBay store. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Next up, I went with some 
Man, look at just the, the lineup of those three guys back there. That's that's quite the lineup. And they look stunning. The tops living inside of the SGC slab, absolutely amazing. Uh, moving on to 1986 Tops Woolworth, number 29, Pete Rose. Now, Woolworth was a set produced by Tops for Woolworth, which was a department store. As we are looking at 1986, Tony Gwynn in a 10 as well. Woolworth was a department store back in the 70s and 80s. And Topps made this set for them. And it was actually considered a pretty high quality set. As we look here at Eddie Murray. What makes it a quality set is uh, cardstock quality. There is a very high gloss. I, I know you, you, you probably can't tell here. But there is a high gloss on the, on the card front. The card is made of very good stock, card stock, and it holds up very well. I love the way the picture folds up here in the bottom right hand corner via 1962 tops, if you remember that. But I've had these in my submission box, oh my goodness, for years, and I just, I've never sent them into PSA because they're never going to go into any kind of set registry. I just have a thing for oddball sets of the 1980s. I love them, especially when it comes to Hall of Famers. Uh, and I loved, I wanted to check out this bright yellow border on the card inside of the SGC slab. I thought that was going to pop very nice as we look at um, Eddie Murray here. And so the set was actually pretty cool because this set was made um, with only hitters who held a some type of batting title or RBI uh, title or home run title so there was no pitchers in the pitchers in the set it's a 33 card set no pitchers were included only the heavy hitters and only players who have held a some type of title for batting it's pretty cool and like I says the the gloss and the quality of them are just amazing I love this this type of stuff here's a Mattingly with a 9.5 I take no exception to that that's beautiful I have no problem with nines 9.5s the scale for SGC kind of I'm not a fan let's just put it that way but I get it and finally the last card of the submission is a 1986 Donruss highlights Jose Canseco in a 10. Just an absolutely beautiful card with the gold border trim inside of the SGC slab is just out of this world. I love it. Oh, I wanted to show you guys the backs of these, um, this set here. This is what the backs look like. Kind of a baseball diamond. Pretty, pretty, pretty nice design. I love, like I says, I love the 80s oddball stuff when it comes to Hall of Famers. If you guys have any um, Hall of Famers graded in that and you want to get rid of them, let me know. I will trade you or, or buy them off of you because it's kind of like a uh, little side thing that I like. Uh, a lot of them are disregarded in the hobby. Uh, when I see them, I love it. I'll, I'll, I'll eat them up. I'll go to a card show and I'll see oddball stuff of the 80s like this graded and they will put it in like a five dollar box i don't i don't even haggle i'll just pay the five bucks and move on because it's something that I, I i really enjoy collecting so now i want to get into some of the differences between sgc and psa all right so let's let's look at some of the differences that i have observed maybe you have too the sgc is overall a bigger slab than a PSA slab. Now I've, I took out the tape measure and I'm looking at left to right the SGC is about a quarter inch wider than the PSA slab. I've also noticed that the slab that the SGC slab is about an eighth of an inch taller than a PSA slab and it's about a sixteenth of an inch thicker than a PSA slab. 
Now, if you're wondering about superior fit sleeves, obviously the PSA ones will not fit. I did have a Beckett sleeve and I slid the SGC slab in there. It did fit pretty nicely, but even those were a little small. The, the flap, when, when, the, when I would go to seal the, the perfect fit sleeve, the two corners would still be exposed. Uh, I looked it up and on the website, Superior Fit Sleeve does sell SGC slab uh, perfect fit sleeves uh, in packages of 50 for like $3.80, three something to that effect. The next difference that I've noticed between SGC and PSA is in the front labels. Now SGC has secured their label inside of a, a pocket which prevents the label from falling, I'm assuming. I know back in the day they had issues with the labels actually falling down into the card. But it looks like it's a, a sticker back and they it's like inside of a, almost like a pocket sleeve I believe. Like it's sealed inside of there, I'm not sure. But what I like is the big font on the number grade. I know there's been a lot of um, complaining on that side of things, and I get it. I mean, you either like it or you don't. Me, I like that big, bold number. Uh, what I wish is for SGC logo to be a little fancier. I know that's been brought up. I do agree with that critique. It should be bigger, it should be fancier, and it should be centered. And there's plenty of room for that. What I don't like is the certification number on the lower right hand corner of the of the label it, to me it's very hard to read it's very small it's typed in bold font and it's just extremely i'm 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 almost 50 years old i wear bifocal lenses and that font is just unreadable for me now the psa label offers big clear font letters and the numbers are real, real easy to read. The Lighthouse logo has an illumination effect. The paper is, is made of a fugitive ink graphic pattern to prevent label washing. I guess they must have had some issue in the past or this is a gimmick. Uh, the red trim around the label really makes it pop. Now the SGC uh, black trim around its label to me makes it very classy speaking of black trim I love how SGC places your card inside of this framed out matted piece of cardboard I, I just think that's that's really the key to their success the corners are cut out too, giving you this really good visibility of the corners of the card and just overall dresses up the card very nicely the hobby has affectionately and properly nicknamed these tuxedo slabs for that black matted finish, making the card look very sophisticated. So next I want to look at the back of the labels, the differences between SGC and PSA back labels. As you can see, SB, SGC doesn't offer much except for an embossed logo of their company. On the PSA side, if you look at the left side of the of the label, you're going to see that there, it has more of that illumination effect. In the center, uh, the center logo has a UV logo pattern, kind of like 1989 Upper Deck, that security logo um, hologram that they had in the back, very similar. So when you hold it up to the light, you're going to see the PSA logo pattern embedded into that center centerpiece there uh, more of that fugitive ink graphic pattern to prevent label washing is in the back as well on the bottom uh, a QR code for instant access to certification uh, I don't I've never used this QR code don't know anybody who has uh, it's supposed to give you quicker access when you're including cards into the set registry you can scan the QR code and it fill it and it um, formulates a, a, a set registry form for you quickly instead of manually entering the number. Kind of gimmicky as well. It's a nice feature. I don't use it. Again, I don't know anybody else who does. This next thing that I've noticed it really has me curious on the SGC side of things. There is a slotted groove. Let me see if this camera will pick it up 
this is the part that really has me curious there is this slotted groove along the edge all the way around and what it looks like it looks like you can very easily get a screwdriver in there and just pop that edge up if you wanted to pop the slab open it looks like it might be fairly easy I don't know if these are sealed um, I'm assuming they are but that's something that really caught my attention when I was looking at these now let's let's just look at aesthetically let's just make an aesthetic observation side by side comparing apples to apples for me after much consideration I appreciate SGC I love how they have emerged with this ambitious movement I love their marketing scheme is it's just out of this world next level stuff and if PSA were to go to belly up today SGC would be my go-to tomorrow however I've been a PSA collector for so many years and a hundred percent of my PC is in PSA slabs on top of that like I've mentioned before you guys may know I am a big time set registry collector and I have been patiently waiting for SGC to start theirs and I've got to just move on I don't know what the hiccup is there I wish they would share a little bit more transparency there I do plan on using um, SGC for specialty items I want to send in this uh, tops now set from 2016 of the Chicago Cubs when they won the World Series uh, tops made uh, that one when they won the NLCS and then they made a 15 card set of the World Series and in the back is all the highlights of the World Series and I do want to get this set slabbed in SGC and I want to get it framed out and I want to display that in my uh, in my card room and so I do appreciate I do respect SGC I love what they have to offer and but for me I'm still a PSA guy well that's all I'm gonna share with you guys today thank you guys for listening I hope uh, I wish you guys all the best hang in there we're gonna get through this and we'll catch you on the next one bye mm -hmm.